Okay, we're in Ephesians chapter 3, uh, and uh, it's a great, we're going to start in the middle of Ephesians chapter 3 and go into 4, and as I told the church, you and the internet are just coming in now, that um, they didn't have chapters originally, it was just, a, it was a scroll, and Ephesians was one scroll. So I'm going to start in the middle of 13 and go in, the, I mean, I'm going to start on verse 14 in chapter 3 and go into chapter 4. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now remember that. It's a very important thing to be submissive and humble before God. And you see what this statement says, and it's what you and I have. You can't be saved unless you do this. For this cause I bow my knee, knees, both knees, under the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you got to bow before the Heavenly Father. Amen. Of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. So you're in the family of God. I talked to someone the other day and they made such a big deal about family, family, family. They're talking about worldly family with blood. That ain't important. Now don't get me wrong. I didn't mean it's not important at all, but it's not very important. The important family is the family of God. Don't forget that. The family of God. You know, Jesus was preaching. And his mother and his children, his brothers and sisters, I don't know whatever happened to his daddy. It wasn't his daddy, it was his stepdaddy. Because he was born of the Holy Ghost. But Joseph, the only time you heard about Joseph is when Mary had the baby. You ain't heard nothing about him in the Bible after that. I don't even, I think he's probably saved. I don't know if he died or, or, but he wasn't significant. He was never mentioned. Never mentioned. But it said his mother, Mary, and the children were outside the church. And she said she wanted to talk to him. You know what Jesus did? He didn't shut down the preaching service and go out there. He said, who is my family? Who is my mother? Who are my brothers and sisters? Those that do the will of my father. The church of God is not, not why his mother and, and the children. Uh, uh, maybe that was one. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not trying to be the devil's advocate here. But I, I know this, that, that uh, uh, Jesus' brothers and sisters, they were not saved until he died. Raised with the Lord Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, but they were not saved. It's very clear in the Bible about that. Now, why that was, I don't know. Uh, I'll tell you one reason why it probably was, that Mama had him out of church and went in the church and trying to call him out of church. You see, how dare you say that? I'm just telling you what the Bible says. It ain't got nothing to do with me. Oh, people get so mad at me. You're taking that out of context. You're reading that wrong. I'm just reading it straight out of the Bible. It says, yeah, I'm back. Hey, Amen. We was pause for a moment, but we're back. So it says, of whom the whole body of heaven and earth is named. Verse 16, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. Well, glory. To be strengthened with might. By his spirit, capital S, it's the Holy Spirit. His spirit in the inner man. You see, I'm 82 years old, going to be 83. But I got the spirit of God in me and it strengthens me. I've got a strong spirit. That blessed Holy Spirit, I've yielded my spirit to the Holy Spirit. And so God's given me power to preach like I am today. I say this kindly, and, and I believe with truth. I believe I have more strength, and I feel I have more power to preach than I ever did in my life. I'm 82 years old. I've been preaching for 50 years. I'm just telling you that, that that's what I believe. And it says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. See, you get saved by faith. Have you been saved? If you've been saved, it's been by faith. By grace ye are saved through faith. And not that of yourself, it's the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. That's in the chapter before this, chapter 3. Verse 18. Um, no, 17. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. Remember, if we have not love, we have nothing. You can't, do, you can't do anything that's worth a nickel unless it's with love. Agape love. 
suffereth long, kind, not easy to promote, borneth not itself, amen, thinketh no evil, amen, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, amen, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things, that's love, amen, amen. Ephesians chapter 13, verses 4 to 7. Rooted and grounded in love, verse 18, may be able to comprehend with all the saints, saved people, what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that ye may be filled with all the fullness of God. Oh, glory. You know what the fullness of God is? It's Holy Ghost in you. Fullness of God. I keep wanting to jump up but I can't jump up. I got to keep sitting down because I got these blood clots in my leg and it gets real sore when I stand up. <laughs> so I keep wanting to jump up, but I got to sit down because my leg hurts. <laughs> now to him, look at verse 20. Look at here. Look at verse 20. Now to him that is able to do exceedingly, exceedingly abundantly above, above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. What's that power that's in us? Huh? What is it? Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost power. Wild glory. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. <laughs> Actually, they, they chose a good place to stop. That's, a, that's the end of... Um, chapter 3, and it's a good place to stop. They chose a good place. I think. I'm going to go into chapter 4 because I won't preach longer, okay? <laughs> are therefore the prisoner, are therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Verse 2, chapter 4. With all lowliness and meekness. I remember that. The way up in Christianity is down. We humble ourselves. What does God do? He exalts us. We exalt ourselves. You know what God does? He humbles us. He knocked the legs out from under us. Yeah. God don't use big shots. God uses humble people. You know, a lot of people start out humble. Uh, you know who started out real humble? Saul. King Saul started out humble. And I believe King Saul started out humble, but I don't believe he ever got saved. And I believe Samuel, that great, that great man of God, Samuel, walked away from Saul. And he said, I won't I'm not talking to you anymore. And boy, Saul went to a witch, tried to call him back and everything. Uh, uh, you know what the devil did? Uh, uh, Saul was trying to call back uh, Samuel from the grave. But uh, it said it came from beneath. Uh, Saul was in heaven. He wasn't beneath. Uh, uh, you know what come from beneath to Saul? Uh, it was a demon. It was a demon that was faking Saul. Uh, not, that was faking Samuel. Don't you think? Don't you think that? I've, I've, I've had demons come in here. Spirit-filled men and women. Not, not, but, but uh, I'm sorry. But it, it was spirit, but it's the wrong spirit. It was the spirit of demons. Did you hear me? Yep. I've had demon-possessed people come in here, claim to be Christians and religious, but it's demons. Just like Samuel. Uh, that that, that you, you see the rich. A witch ain't going to call out Samuel from heaven. He's going to call out a demon from hell. That's what the Bible said. He come out from below. And boy, here's, well, here's Samuel. No, it's a demon faking Samuel, huh? That's what I believe. I believe the Bible teaches that. <laughs> I don't care if you believe it or not. I do. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Wow. That's what we do if we walk worthy. We're humble. We're humble. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. Bible says confess your sins one to another. That ain't my strong suit. Humbleness is not my strong suit. And and I, I say that with tears and with repentance. We've got to humble ourselves more. I've known some 
Christians, men and women that are so humble. You know what? Nothing ever bothers them. You know why? Because they're humble. You, you know, the Bible says in, in the book of Psalms, it says, Great peace have they that love thy law. Psalm 119, 165. Great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing, nothing, nothing shall offend them. How, how many of you ever get offended? How many of you ever get offended? Uh, you know why we get offended? We're proud and arrogant. We're proud and arrogant. That's it. I mean, a humble person is never offended. How come they're never offended? Because they're nobody. They're nothing. Only people get offended is when you and I get pride and arrogance. You understand that? You understand that when 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 you when you curl up and bow up and 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 fight back, it's because of your pride. Amen. Come on. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Verse 3, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit, capital S, the unity of the Holy Ghost. There ain't no, look, when you've got the unity of the Holy Ghost, there ain't no fight, there ain't no fussing. There ain't no calling each other down. You understand? There's unity in the Holy Ghost. Understand? Amen. Like the 120 on the day of Pentecost, the church was 120. Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 2. The Holy Ghost come down, 3,000 were saved and baptized and added to the church, and the church was 3,120. You know why? Because of unity in prayer. Amen? Verse 4. There is one body and one spirit, capital S, Holy Ghost, even as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. That's the baptism of the Holy Ghost when you get saved, not water baptism. See, there's several different baptisms. You think every time baptism is mentioned, it's water baptism. That's just one kind of baptism. The big baptism is baptism of the Holy Ghost. Don't forget that. You can't be saved without baptism of the Holy Ghost. A lot of people, a lot of people have been stuck down in the water and never been saved. You understand? Yeah. One God, one and Father of all. And who is above all, above all, above all, and through all and in all that are saved. Amen? Amen. Well, glory. Older I get, the more I, I love the Bible. But in every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Verse 8, wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high. When did he ascend up on high? Do you remember? Acts 1.8. You shall be endued with power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall witness unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and all those parts of the world. And then there's two angels standing there and he, and, he, and he went up. He ascended into heaven. That's what it says here. When he ascended up on high, what did he do? He gave the great commission. Great commission. And he led captivity captive and he gave gifts unto men. Verse 9. Now he that ascended, remember when he went up? He went up there, Acts 1 8, and then remember 28, remember Matthew 28, he went up, remember Mark 16, he went up. There were several times when it shows the ascension, and each time he gave the ascension, he gave the Great Commission. Amen? That's the only thing that really matters, getting people saved. Well, that Pastor Varga, you know. He's kind of hung up on this thing about trying to get people saved every day. They ain't nothing else that matters. You you preach all your foolishness and all your religion. I just keep trying to get people saved. Amen. Amen. That's all that matters. Amen. The Great Commission. Yes. And if you're saved, you ought to try to get someone else saved. Or maybe you ain't saved at all. But he did also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. Now, he never went to hell. Jesus ain't never been in hell. The lower parts of the earth meant that he died for three days. That's all it means. He was dead three days in the grave and he raised up. That's what it meant. So don't try to listen to these so-called smart preachers that say he went down to hell. Ain't, Jesus ain't never been in hell. Don't want to go to hell. and ain't got nothing to do with hell. So don't even forget about that baloney. Verse 10. He that descended, that means died, doesn't mean went to hell. He never went to hell. Every time I hear some foolish preacher why preaching that baloney. That? Why do they say that? Huh? That he descended into hell. Well, that's what they say because it says in another 
scripture. It says in another scripture, he said unto hell, but the, but the word hell is Sheol. It could be the grave. It could be the fires of hell. But when it says hell, uh, it, 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 I mean, it's the same word. But he ain't never been to hell. The whole thing Jesus ever did to keep people out of hell. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad he got you out? He got me out of hell. How about you? Amen. Anybody else here saved? Come on. Amen. Well, glory. <laughs> you know, you other folks, we got folks sleeping in here this morning. Amen. And we got people that don't seem to care. I mean, I'll tell you when you're going to wake up. Uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you when you're never going to sleep again, when you're in hell. You'll beg for sleep. You know what you'll do? You'll have be tormented. Yeah. Day and night. Weeping. Yeah. Nice. Wailing. Nice. Gnashing of teeth. Falling. Where the worm dies not. Darkness. Where the worm dies not. Yeah. And, and the fire is never quenched. Never quenched. How are you going to be falling <laughs> in fire and it be dark? I don't know, but I believe it. Oh, I don't have to debate nobody else. I just... Someone that bless his heart, my my son, oldest son. He getting influenced by some false teacher here lately. They're going to debate people about truth. <laughs> Jesus saith, "I am the way, the truth, and the life." I don't need to debate nobody about the Bible. You, uh, you know what you need to do with the Bible? Just believe it. Don't try to convince somebody through worldly wisdom that the Bible's true. You know why the Bible's true? Because God said it is. Yeah. Amen. You see, you can't debate and explain the Bible. Because the Bible is what? It's a miracle book. You can't explain a miracle. Can you explain a miracle? No, you can't explain a miracle. No. You can't explain my salvation. You can't explain my my birth. No. You can't explain like the last couple of days I've been mentioned, Hunter Third and I saw about how God says we're curiously made and he knew all our parts before we were ever formed in our mother's womb. Huh? Yeah. Go on, explain that. That's just a miracle. Just shut up and trust God and believe it. Amen? Amen. Makes things a lot easier, don't you think? And try to argue someone in, in the Bible. I, I just accept everything by faith. Amen. There you go, Eddie. Eddie, you get this. I'm trying to help you, Eddie. That's my boy. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens. See, there's first heaven, second heaven, third heaven. Do you know that? You know what the first heaven is? That's where the planes fly around. You know where the second heaven is? Mars and Jupiter and all them there. You know where the third heaven is? Well, glory, that's where God is, amen? <laughs> so you got three heavens. Yeah. No, is there, is there no, a, a purgatory, uh, Angie's asked about purgatory. Purgatory is a lie to Catholics to make money. You see, purgatory is a lie to Catholics to make money. I saw my friend Patrick from some of his past. <laughs> God bless him, I chuckled when he did it. I didn't say nothing to him when he did it, but yeah. he prayed. He went like this, something like that, like Catholics do. It's from your past, from it's, Catholicism. It's very brainwashing and yeah, but that's a, and I I giggled because he he just doing what he's told to do when he's younger, but but that uh, that's a lot of that's more baloney from the Catholic Church, just like purgatory. <laughs> Some people think this is hell, huh? And it's just Satan's playground when he threw one third of the angels. Do what? Talk loud! I can't hear. Did Jesus remember he threw one third of the angels out of heaven, and he gave Satan the earth and it's his playground? Well, he threw. He threw Lucifer, the devil, out of heaven with about a third of the angels, they say. But he ain't never gone to hell and there ain't no purgatory. And, and uh, There's heaven or hell, that's it. You die, you go to heaven or hell. If you're saved, you go to heaven. If you're lost, you go to hell. There ain't no in The purgatory, uh, they just made that up to make money. Uh, you know, like my friend uh, used to say, high, high money, high mass. Low money, low mass. No money, no mass. <laughs> you pay, they pray. <laughs> they got a book of the dead. You put your, you put your dead loved one name in that book. You put $5 in, 
they'd probably pay for you about five minutes and forget about you. You put in 5,000, they'll pray for you longer. You put in 50,000, they'll pray longer. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just nothing but the crookedness of, of the wicked devil's Catholic Church, the great whore. Yeah, get rid of all that foolishness. Yeah. Verse 10. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens and all my, the third heaven. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. See, I'm a, I'm a pastor because I'm perfecting saints. I'm trying to get you to be more like Jesus. I'm trying to teach you. That's why as pastors, you see. Uh, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Edify means teaching. The pastor, that's how I'm supposed to be teaching you about the Bible. That's what, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm doing right now. Verse 13. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. You know the Bible, another passage, it says, And ye that are perfect, now, what does it mean when, when the Bible says, ye that are perfect? Now, is, is anybody that is alive on, on, on the face of this earth, are, are, are we perfect? Are we sinless? Well, no. But we're perfect in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Because if we weren't perfect, we couldn't go to heaven. You understand? Yeah. When I trusted in Christ and believed in faith, I became perfect in Christ, but I still sinned as a, as a, as a, as a mortal being, as, as a human being. Because I still have a free choice and a free will, you understand. But uh, but it says here, uh, we come to unity faith unto a perfect man. Now I'm going to be perfect like Jesus. When uh, when will I be perfect like Jesus, Billy Joe? When you think you'll be perfect like Jesus? When we die, yeah. yeah. When we're dead, we'll be like him. We'll see him like he is. It will be like him. I don't know what all that means, but I'm happy about it. <laughs> no more sin. I should be glad. No more temptation. Some of you look sad. Yeah. Some of you are sad right now. I'm looking out. Some of you are sad. Oh, glory. Glory. That we might henceforth be no more children. Here's the problem with a lot of you that are saved, if you're saved at all. Verse 14, that we henceforth be more like children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. See, there's people in our church right here that are sitting in our congregation this morning or people that are out there that are Christians. You're carnal Christians. You're baby Christians. You never grew up. Tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. You hear some new phoniness, some baloney. And you follow them along like the ox to the slaughter. You don't know the Bible and someone leads you astray. You have no truth because you don't know the Bible. You don't read the Bible. You don't study the Bible. You don't memorize the Bible. And then some false teacher will come along, some cult, a Jehovah Witness or, or a Seventh-day Adventist or someone else or a Church of Christ. And they'll drag you down the wrong road, you understand. By the slight of men. And cunning craftiness, like the Church of Christ down the street here, just before you get to Publix on Ridgewood, you know what they've had on there for the last couple of years? God is good. Well, that's good. He is good. He's the only one that's good. But I've never seen him put on there, repent. See, everybody wants a good God that don't hold you to your sins, don't they, huh? Everybody wants some little goody two-shoes God that that says that you're a good two shoes and you're okay and you'll make it. No, you go to hell. You see, you also, you got a forgiving God, but you have to repent, you understand. You want to live in sin, you go to hell. When the doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Oh my, there's so much false religion around. There's so much false, there's false Baptist churches. There's false Pentecostal churches. There's false community churches. 
There's false non-denominational churches. There's false Presbyterian churches. There's false Methodist churches. There's false, 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 false. But then there's some true churches that believe in the born-again experience and a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. If anybody tells you you got to be a part of their organization, run from them like fire because they come out of hell. They no church what it calls himself has a corner of salvation it's a personal decision and a group of personally saved people get together and have a congregation that's called a local church amen put any kind of name you want on it but if it's a born again people gathering together that's a local church praise God but speak the truth in love speak the truth you see a lot of people today, so-called preachers, so-called Christians, they, they say because I preach repentance and I preach the fires of hell that I don't preach the love of God. That is the love of God. Don't forget that. It says, but speak the truth in love. You see, the truth is there's a heaven, there's a hell. You understand? You got to preach the negative with the positive. You understand? Preach it, may grow up unto him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Verse 16, from whom the whole body fitly joined together. Now, when is when is all of the Christians uh, uh, going to be a, a one body uh, in, in, in a group? It's going to be at the rapture. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and we that are here shall be caught up to be with the Lord. We'll be with the Lord. You're going to have an assembly. At the rapture, you understand. And that's the true church. There ain't no invisible church because a church is a gathering. It's an assembly. You can't gather invisibly. <laughs> You've got to have something to gather. Amen? Come on. Come on. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by the which every joint supplied according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Huh. Well, I'm going to go on. This I say, verse 17, therefore, and testify in the Lord that he has, that, that ye, that ye, you, church, henceforth walk, not as other Gentiles walk, that's lost people, in the vanity of their mind. You see, we got a lot of vanity in our mind, don't we? We love worldly things, don't we, huh? Anything worldly gets you sometime? Something got me yesterday. It, uh, vanity of the mind of, of worldly things. Uh, and uh, it wasn't real strong. But I thought upon it. I shouldn't have. Could have been anything. Doesn't matter what it is. I ain't going to tell you what it is. It, it doesn't make no difference. That, that, that's not the thing. But the thing is, the vanity of worldly things can get after us. Yeah. Sometimes when God allows demons to get us it'll grab us so hard it'll drag us but sometimes it's just a little bitty thing and we'll follow after it you know why because we want to huh come on yeah 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 vanity of their mind having the understanding darkened see sometimes we as christians can be darkened you understand what i'm saying you understand angie what i'm talking about you understand that you see we as christians even sometimes where our mind is darkened, where the good part or the right thing is shut off, and, and the oldness of the vanity and the worldliness and the sinfulness of this world overpowers it, and we follow the flesh instead of the spirit. That's how Christians get backslidden. That's how we get into sin, whatever it may be. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, that's the spirit-filled life, through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. You see, a heart gets blindness from one of two reasons. Either we're not saved and we're blind, or either we're backslidden and the things of this world are overshadowing the things of God. Do you understand that? Only you know if you're saved or not. But if you live in sin, it's because you're in darkness because you've chosen darkness over light. Because your deeds are evil. You understand? You get it? Yeah. How many of you have done that? I have. As a Christian, I've done that. Have you done it? Anybody else in here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness. Now that's actually a sexual word, lasciviousness. To work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation. Conversation is more than speech. It's a way of life, understand. The word conversation in the old English is way of life, not just, not just talking. To the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. Don't forget them all worldly lusts. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which after God has created righteousness and true holiness. So what are we seeking? True holiness, righteousness. That's what we want. Is that what you want? Anybody else want righteousness and holiness besides me? Do you want it? Amen. Raise your hand if you want it. Now see, some of you love your sin so much that you don't want it. Some of you even sleeping. God help us. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind and then put on the new man which after God has created righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying. Quit lying. I catch people in lies. All, I tell people around here, if, if you want to be used around here, don't lie for me, don't steal for me. Don't lie for me, don't steal for me. Once you lie, lie to me and steal for me, you ain't worth nothing around here. I can't use you. I can't trust you. You can come to church, but you're not going to put a, be an active part of the leadership of this church if you're a liar and a thief. People come here, I tell you, don't steal from me, don't lie to me. That's it. Amen. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man the truth when it is to his neighbor, for we are members one of another, save people. But be angry and sin not. Let, let not the sun go down upon you. Now, be angry and sin not. You see, I get angry at sin. I shouldn't get angry for, at folks or something. You know, uh, you, uh, you know one of the main reasons why we get angry? You know what it is? Because we're proud and arrogant. We get mad because we're proud. If you're a doormat and you're nothing, what can anybody say about you or do to you that make you mad? Nothing. Nothing. Great peace if you love the Bible. Nothing shall offend you. You just... Let it go on. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Neither give place to the devil. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more. But rather let him labor, working with his hands. And the thing which is good, that he may have to give him. And indeed, someone, someone just a few days ago stole someone's shoes around here. <laughs> Someone else found him with the shoes. <laughs> they said, "How come? How come? How come so and so's names on them shoes, and you got them on your feet? <laughs> You're a dirty thief. That's why. You're a thief. <laughs> God help us. Working with his hands, the things which is good, that he may give to give him that needeth. Be a giver, not a taker." Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Look at this verse 31. Come on now, look at it, look at it. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. We close on this verse. And be ye kind, and be ye kind, and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Well, isn't that good? Amen. Didn't we have a nice bunch of scripture today? Isn't the Bible wonderful? Amen. Why don't we just start obeying it? Amen. How many of you say, God being my helper, I, I want to start obeying the Bible. I want to be serious about this Amen. thing couple of you. That's sad. You only get a couple out of a bunch to want to do right. But that's the way it is. That's the way it is. Heavenly Father, thank you. Amen. Help us, Lord. 
Be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another. Even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Thank you, Lord. Help you, Lord. Help you, Lord. Help us. Help us, Lord. We need forgiveness. Thank you for your love toward us. To forgive us. Help us forgive others. Help us to live for you. Amen. Help us to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. Thank you, Lord. Help us to be a witness to everybody we meet. Thank you, my Father. Lord, help us, help us. Anybody unsaved in church today? Anybody unsaved out there in the viewing audience? You know if you are or not. Why don't you just pray with me right now and get saved? You know if you're saved or not. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me. Shed your precious blood. On Calvary's cross, rose from the grave the third day. And the best I know how, with an honest heart, I turn from my sins, receive you as my Savior. Thank you for saving me. Right now, amen, amen. Well, listen, dear ones, you that are here in, in the church, if you've made a true decision for Christ today, come and seal it at an old-fashioned altar. we got an altar here, here and in front of our church, out on the grass. Kneel and pray, repent today. Got to repent or you can't be saved. If you have, come to the old-fashioned altar. God bless you. We're going to have revival services, anniversary, 42nd anniversary of Johnny Pruitt and the Faith Baptist Church over here on Flomish Road. I think it was 390. What's the address over there? <laughs> well, you go over the railroad tracks going on Flemish West, just over the railroad tracks to the left, you see a pretty little white church with a steeple on it, and it's the Faith Baptist Church, and they're having anniversary services from the 4th through the next week that's a sunday we're gonna as a church we're gonna go visit there we're gonna be part of each day we're gonna be there and be part of that and i hope you make our church members are gonna be part of it yeah, and uh and uh, as, uh, and, uh, uh, uh brother billy joe uh, he was there when they started that church he yeah. took the picture of of pastor pruitt laying yeah, the first the block, block the cornerstone what time will you all be up there huh Yeah, yeah, well, I'll have to let you know. This. They have morning services and evening services. Okay. And they have food, too. They have breakfast, they have lunch, they have supper, and it's just a wonderful time. People come from all over, North Carolina, Tennessee, mostly hillbillies. Mostly singing hillbillies come to that thing. They come from, <laughs> like like Billy Joe here. You like Billy Joe's singing? Really you like, like me. Hillbillies like Billy Joe. Try and true. <laughs> But but you you like we're gonna be part of it and like I I believe the morning services are at ten and the evening at six, and 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 they have breakfast served early and and then uh, they have Supper lunch is, after the at five. huh suppers at five. suppers at five o'clock yeah it's Faith Baptist Church on and it starts on the fourth and it lasts from Sunday till Thursday that's usually when it runs doesn't it I think so I think so and they're preaching Faith Baptist, Faith Baptist Church. It's on Flemish Road, just over the railroad tracks to the left. And I got the internet on here, too. You come. Everybody's welcome. You'll have a great time. Brother Pruitt, he's my best friend. He's, 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 he's a wonderful man of God. He's been my best friend uh, through the years here since I've come here in 92. Just look for your camper. 92. Everybody knows your camper. You see your camper sitting there. Yeah, you go over there. Uh, you see my camper that, that you see seen here on the parking lot and also... Audit to welcome my camper be over there. I'm gonna let some uh, missionaries or church people that don't have a place to stay. They'll be staying in in, in my camper over there, in our camper, the, the mission camper. And uh, we'll be having supply. That'll be over there, and there'll be others too. And he has campers come in too. But uh, I'm I'm excited about what God's doing. We're praying for a revival. Why don't you be part of it? Why don't you be part of it? If you're serious, you be in. If you're not serious, you'd be gone. You'd be out there with the world. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That are not of the Father, but are of the world. And the world passeth away in the lust thereof. 
But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye, Internet.